Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a conversation that we continue to have around great thinking on the Outer Banks. And today we are fortunate to include in this conversation North Carolina's Insurance Commissioner Mike Causey. Commissioner, you just came through a primary. Congratulations. I can't thank imagine you. you wouldn't be a favorite in a general. More importantly, thank you for visiting Curry Tuck County. I know you're on your way to Manio in just a little bit. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to visit. Insurance is a hot topic on everybody's <laughs> mind, and I know we've got several things to talk about today. Just off camera, you and I were chatting about things like insurance fraud. Not only will vacation rental homeowners, but also residents be interested in your advice on markets and rates, and then things like storm preparedness. But that's enough of an introduction. Commissioner, welcome. What's Thank your you. advice? Thank you, Clark, and thanks for having me. And you're right, when I go out and talk to these groups, I say, I know nobody out there has ever had a problem getting an insurance claim paid. But if people do have a problem with any sort of insurance issue, they need to call us, go to our website, ncdoi.gov. We have a toll-free number that's on that website. It's 855-408-1212. And we actually have people Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 on the phones to take consumer calls. And that's all they do every day is just help consumers with any kind of insurance claim dispute or issue, or if it's a dispute with a doctor, uh, a hospital bill, or a doctor's office, or any of those type things, we get involved with that. We help seniors with Medicare and Medicaid issues too. We in, we do all sorts of fraud investigations. So, you know, my message is, you know, we're here to help. And I know there's a couple of things you wanted to talk about. And the the one big thing that I would encourage everybody to talk to their insurance agent about is replacement value coverage. And that is true with automobile insurance as well as your homeowner's uh, property insurance. Because if you are driving an automobile that's two or three years old and it's, it ends up being a total loss, the insurance companies use what's called actual cash value, ACV. That's depreciated value. So many times people owe more on the payoff on a vehicle than that depreciated value. So you'll be in this argument with the insurance company, well, I, my car is worth more than this. They're only going to pay the actual cash value, which is, is not going to be that much. And the most times, consumers come up with a short end of the stick. However, if you have replacement value coverage, that will pay for you to get a current year brand new vehicle regardless of the cost. So for a few dollars more in monthly premiums or however you pay your insurance premiums, it is worth its weight in gold to have that replacement value coverage. And that's true with the uh, contents of your home. You have a piece of furniture that came from your great grandmother that is valuable to you. You it may you may have it appraised two or three thousand dollars, but the insurance company says, hold on, this thing is fifty eight years old, it's depreciated, it's only worth fifty eight dollars. So uh, people are very disappointed on their settlements with any type of insurance claim unless they have that replacement value coverage. I love that thinking. I didn't even really think about that, to be honest. I've got a 1500 Chevy outside and it's 20 years old and it's probably worth five grand, but it costs 50 to buy a new one. So that's, I appreciate exactly. you bringing that up. Moving to real estate, we think about, and I know you're here because a lot of folks, particularly along the coast, are thinking about the potential for insurance rate increases. What's your advice as we think about and contemplate the cost to own and in some cases operate vacation, rental, or residential properties? It's a huge problem. The Wall Street Journal had an article a couple of months ago, it's becoming impossible to, to afford a homeowner's or automobile insurance in many parts of the country. And I guess the good news for North Carolina is that we're in better shape than most of our neighboring states. But 
everything's going up. Inflation is killing us all. Uh, we, you know, we had the insurance industry come come mm-hmm. with a rate filing yep. the first of January, and it was a doozy. It know, was. They they were uh, averaging across the state forty two percent, but on the coastal North Carolina. And partic- from from the Outer Banks down through Brunswick County, in some of the coastal areas, it was almost a hundred percent. Onslow, ninety nine point four percent. Correct. Exactly right. And so, the the thing I want to make clear is how the system works in North Carolina. We're different from Virginia, South Carolina, and uh, and all the other states in the United States. We're what is called a rate filing state, a rate bureau state. So the rate bureau was created by the General Assembly back in 1977. So since 1977, any insurance company that writes automobile insurance or homeowners is required to be a member of the North Carolina Rate Bureau. And I want to be clear on this. The Rate Bureau has nothing to do with the Department of Insurance. It's not a government agency. It's simply a governing board. It's a board of 14 people that was created by the legislature. Only two of those people are appointed, and the two appointed are appointed by the governor of the state of North Carolina. The other 12 represent the insurance companies that are writing okay. that business. And the legislature required that six of the members or 50% of the insurance members be from stockholder-owned insurance companies. And the other 50%, the other six members have to be from mutual or non-stockholder-owned insurance companies. So what you have is 12 people representing the insurance companies plus two public members appointed by the governor, and they're a total, totally independent governing board. And let's say the insurance companies are paying out more in homeowners' claims, which some of the companies claim they're paying out actually more in claims than they're taking in in premiums. And you, and you have inflation, you have all of these other factors. You have the storms. The, mm-hmm. uh, they 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 yeah. had climate change as a big factor, uh, also. And so, when the companies see the need to to raise rates across the state, they are required by state law to do a rate filing with the Department of Insurance. And the uh, state law dictates to the insurance commissioner how it has to be handled, and that is. Once the rate filing's made, the insurance commissioner is not supposed to have a public comment until the public comment period. Oh, I didn't know so that. Thank you. We had a public comment period that I set up on January 22nd. The realtors in North Carolina were really proactive in getting out to their membership to send letters. Mm-hmm. And we had people that came to Raleigh on January 22nd. We had thousands of people that that joined in with their computers virtually. And for two weeks, we kept the comment period open until February 2nd. And I received over 25,000 letters and emails, and including groups like uh, AARP, Mm -hmm. Realtors Association, county commissioners from most of the coastal counties, the, every a member of our congressional delegation mm-hmm. sent me a letter. Many of our state legislators sent a letter. And everybody says the same thing. Please don't raise our homeowners' insurance rates. We're being killed at the grocery store. The groceries are three or four times what we mm-hmm. were paying a few years ago. Our fuel costs are double what they were a few years ago. The construction costs are mm-hmm. up significantly. Our local taxes are way up. We just, and our paychecks are not keeping pace. So we really cannot stand a big increase. So once that public comment period closed, and that rate filing's two to 3,000 pages. So we went through all of that and looked in the company's uh, 
They're not supposed to pull out of thin air a number. They're supposed to justify what they're paying out, what they're bringing in, their operating expenses and all that. Well, I can only pick one or two words, yes or no, and I, I want everybody to understand, since I've been commissioner, every rate hike request that's come before me, I have said N-O, no. And when I say no, we're required by state law to, to go to court. So mm -hmm. that's where we are with this homeowner's rate filing. We have set a court date for October 7th, 2024, and that's where everything is headed. So we stalled off what the companies wanted to increase everybody's rates by August, and now okay. we're gonna make the companies prove what mm -hmm. they're asking for and see where okay. we end up. Thank you very much. What an educational yeah. visit this has been. I know your time is limited. You've got a car yeah. ride over to Manio. You'll be visiting with another group there. Your team is just off camera. Any parting thoughts? We've talked about folks who live here. Obviously, nor this part of North Carolina has a lot of homeowners who don't necessarily live on the Outer right. Banks. Any broad advice relative to markets, relative to rates? Fraud, I know, is a subject <coughs> near and dear to your heart. Parting thoughts? There is a tremendous amount of insurance fraud, and that really drives up our all types of insurance. And if you think about it, or you look at any of the studies, the uh, Coalition Against Insurance Fraud has, has conservatively estimated that insurance fraud is costing Americans more than $300 billion a year, and I think that's probably a half of what it's actually costing. But every dollar that you pay, that we pay, mm -hmm. on any type of insurance premium, about 20 cents is going just to cover the fraud. fraud. So with health care is the biggest area. We have med lots of Medicare and Medicaid fraud. We have sometimes medical providers who miscode something to get mm -hmm. a higher reimbursement. Sometimes it's the uh, patient or the policyholder not, not putting correct information down, and, and occasionally it's an insurance agent. So it's all across the board, but we ask people if they suspect fraud to call it in to report it. it we have an anonymous reporting system, just like Crime Stoppers, we have a form that SAS developed for the Department mm -hmm. of Insurance for our Criminal Investigation Division where people can uh, you know, put in the mm -hmm. basic information. Our investigators will, will look into it. And I want to say probably for uh, the homeowner side of it, the biggest driver outside of inflation are these unethical roofing contractors. There is a lot of fraud in the roofing contractor world, they uh, study a county and look at the past three years on any storms that's hit an area. They'll send people door to door. They particularly target elderly people that are uh, homeowners and they'll drive through neighborhoods. And we've had them stop and say, you've got damage to your house, you owe a fine. If you don't pay it, we're gonna turn it over to a collection agency. So. Beware of scams, they're, they're everywhere. And if people uh, have any questions, give us a call at the Department of Insurance because we are here to help. And they can send an uh, di email directly to me at mike.causey at ncdoi.gov and I'll be happy to handle it. North Carolina's Commissioner of Insurance, Mike Causey. Commissioner, thank, thank you, you for being here today. Thank you for visiting. Thank you for sharing your advice with us. Safe travels. Thank you, Carl. And we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.